Hello, everybody. Uh, good morning. Um, can I get a thumbs up if you can all hear me? There we go. Awesome. Um, my name is Sam Balto. I'm a physical education teacher in Portland, Oregon. Um, I've also taught phys ed in Washington, D.C. and Boston, Massachusetts. And it's really special to be on such an international uh, workshop webinar. Um, I've been very fortunate. I've been to over 20 countries, which I really feel has sort of helped create how I view spaces and you know, not feeling limited by what you know I might have only seen in the United States, but really being able to see things all around the world. So um, I'm going to be sharing some thoughts um, about creating movement spaces at schools. But um, I wanted to start with a quote really quickly uh, from former President Barack Obama. And I say this quote because as a phys ed teacher, I feel alone a lot of times at a school and in a community. And I want to say this because even though we are all around the world, you know, we all have the same passion of working with children to you know, better their development. So we are not alone, we are all together. So the quote is, it's only when you hit your wagon to something larger than yourself that you realize your true potential. So I really feel like this topic is incredibly important and it's really special that we're all together doing this today. Um, so there we go. So these are some photos during COVID when it first started, I uh, did tactical urbanism to close off my street. We painted, I spray painted uh, physically distant family squares. So every family on our block uh, had their own square. And every day from about March until the end of June, we would have PE class in the street. And it was incredible. Um, I'm also a, uh, avid tactical urbanist, so an advocate for safe routes to school. Um, and at my school in Boston, Massachusetts, you might've heard of the football player, Tom Brady. I put his face on a crosswalk sign to bring attention to a school crossing that uh, kept on getting hit that was very unsafe for children. And that ended up resulting um, in over a million dollar grant to improve infrastructure in that area of Boston. Um, and another project, this one was also international. We called it the Red Cup Project to show how paint um, on bike lanes does not provide protection. So you put the red cups or red tomatoes out and you know you wait a couple of minutes and they get smashed. Um, and uh, it's amazing how some media really can make some changes sometimes to the uh, built environment to make spaces safer for people biking. Um, so to set the stage, I think there's three numbers I want us to sort of understand. You know, we all agree 60 minutes of physical activity is recommended daily for children, 30 minutes for adults. So how do we, how do we accomplish that? Globally, only 81% 81, 81 of children do not accomplish that. And according to the World Health Organization, 5 million deaths per year could be averted if the global population was more active. So these are, you know, very concrete facts that we are here to try to solve. And I think myself as a phys ed teacher, I see my students five days a week, but in the United States, at some schools, I've only had my kids once a week for 45 minutes. In Portland, I have them twice a week for 30 minutes each time. They have recess. But where are they getting those 60 minutes of physical activity if they're not happening at school? Um, and so I've become really passionate about making sure that and encouraging children walking and biking to school to sort of create that built-in physical activity. Um, and the pandemic has really shown the value of space. Um, you know, with everything being closed, space, the value of space has gone up tremendously. Um, and so as a school teacher, as you know, as somebody who works in the school community, a school campus should be serving the school and students to its highest degree. Um, and so I'm going to do a little case study of what we've done at my school. 
where I'm more or less arguing that the school parking lot does not serve our students to the highest degree. Um, so, you know, school assets are students, teachers and staff, the community, the school campus facilities, and also the streets around the school. So how do we leverage those assets to benefit the children at that school and the greater community as well? So this is my school. Um, the orange and the green is the total campus. Um, and the green is the parking lot, which is about one fifth of the school campus. And it surrounds, you know, two of the major sides. And, you know, any space that has cars is not friendly for children. So why do we have such a large space devoted for, you know, storage of automobiles right next to a school? Um, so what I started to do was, you know, think about how can we make our school more child friendly and improve physical fitness outcomes. And I sort of started to do that with the parking space. Um, so parking lot reimagined. So what we started to do was uh, we had a grant and we got students feedback to create some murals. Um, and I think by just like Vivian's talking about, you know, brightening up a space, making it more human scale. Um, we solicited students feedback on how to, you know, what kind of murals to do. So there's the solar system. We had a new crosswalk where they got to design the crosswalk and a butterfly um, design. And it's, you know, pretty amazing to then bring able to bring the community together to then be able to paint it. So here are some this is the before of the parking lot and the after. So now you can kind of see how, you know, you're a student, a middle schooler looking out the window. This is what you saw before was just parked car and asphalt. Now you see, you know, beautiful butterflies all over the place. Um, this was the crosswalk to the field and this is it now. This was an area outside our youngest grades that was just usually used for uh, the trash pickup. And this is our solar system. Um, and during the pandemic, even though we were apart from our students, there was opportunities when students would come to pick up food and other supplies. And it brought me a lot of joy when I saw one of my students and her mother weeping over the different stars. Um, so, you know, they're getting that physical activity, even though the building is not open, it is still a community space. It is, you know, something that can still bring joy and children can still feel connected. Um, I personally found myself during the pandemic when the building was closed, I would just go to the campus because it just gave me those same feelings. And we want to create that for our students um, and the community. It is a a school is a, you know, an incredibly important place um, for communities. So we wanna, you know, build it up and make it as special as it possibly could be. So the parking lot before on top was, you know, parent drop-off. Now with the mural, we were able to create something called the Thrive Zone. So basically what we did was we moved, I'm glitching, um, we moved the drop-off area just back. We moved it back about uh, 150 feet um, using some cheap bollards, some cheap posts, and then daily I would put out the orange cones. Um, and parents would just drop their kid off 150 feet farther away. But if there's no cars moving, then it's safe. The second there's a car moving close to that area, naturally parents are gonna wanna drop their kid off to the closest point. So if you just created no car spaces, it's an agreement, it's safe now, parents feel comfortable dropping their children off. And they get, you know, the children get an extra 100, you know, 50 feet of physical activity. And they're also not inhaling exhaust from other parents, you know, dropping off their children. And sort of what we've been thinking about now as we start coming back to school is how to you know, potentially remove some of the parking spots and create something new there. Something that uh, ser serves the you know, school community and the students even better. 
So an outdoor classroom was an idea, a kindergarten play area. So activities and games that are more focused towards child, uh, younger children. Um, and then like a sensory imagination garden. All right, so these are three ideas that I wanted to share that I think can be used anywhere um, around schools. So one is called the Traffic Garden Project, plazas around schools and public right of way for play. So the Traffic Garden Project, if you might've heard of traffic gardens, they're miniature infrastructure streets for children to learn biking and pedestrian skills. And these can be made with chalk. So in the, on the left picture, um, during our COVID PE, I just chalked a figure eight. And then the kids on roller skates who are practicing their roller blades were able to work on navigating that with each other. Um, to the right was the first traffic garden I did with a spray paint at my school on a spot of the blacktop that wasn't being used. So there's just nothing there. Um, and the amazing thing is when you paint these traffic gardens, children magically show up. You know, no matter whatever you're doing, what time of day, they see it. They, I almost feel like they sniff out like something that's child friendly and they just appear. So um, I'm not, here's a, um, a YouTube, I'll put it into the chat. I don't want everybody's computers to glitch, um, but this is another traffic garden I did in Portland. And these traffic gardens cost me maybe $50. Um, to spray paint. And the return on investment for $50 is just, you know, you can't beat it. These two hours with some friends and it's temporary. So you can modify it. You can change it. During COVID, I wasn't really able to get much, you know, children and community input. But the goal is, you know, as we start reopening more and coming together more, we can take it to the next level and make it more permanent. And I have a map of all the traffic gardens that were done in the United States, um, Seattle, Portland, Bend, Virginia, North Carolina. I'm waiting for some to be done uh, internationally. So please send them to me when you create them. Another, you know, same idea is uh, creating space around schools are plazas. Um, so just pretty much moving car parking, Reclaiming that space around schools allows parents to physically distance. You know, it's a calmer space. You know, you see seniors sitting here, um, but it also is creating the school, you know, a school is a community space, not a space that you drop your kids off and leave. It's a place to connect. And I really think, you know, plazas are a really cool idea to, after being apart so long, to bring people back together um, in a really meaningful way. And schools, I believe, do have a role in that. That is something that I think schools should be focusing on um, because it is part of, you know, children wellness. You know, when communities are more connected, students feel safer. Um, in Milan, Italy, they're really taking this to the next level. To the next level, um, there should be it should be switching, but. Um, they're reclaiming tons of spaces around schools, painting murals, putting up ping pong tables um, in these spaces and just sort of letting the community take over. And it's pretty amazing. Um, if the, the Mitrio, if he's on some podcasts and some videos, and it's just really awesome to hear how he communicates um, about these interventions and how successful they are. And this is one that I found in uh, United Kingdoms where a school fundraised to create a playground space in the street. So they used, you know, relatively cheap materials to create more space for children using the public right away. Um, this is a project I worked on in Boston where we use student bus stops. So children waiting for the bus are just standing there. That is a time that we could be engaging them and they could be getting physical activity and learning and interacting with their peers or adults. So uh, working with the city, they created four different types of uh, 
active bus stops. And some were, you know, mazes, some were more physical, some were musical. Um, but, you know, it's about engaging children. And, you know, if we think about those 60 minutes, it doesn't say how you get to 60 minutes. It could be 30 seconds here, one minute here, 10 minutes there. We just got to get to 60 minutes. Um, so I think that this was a really great way to engage children around that. And uh, as physical education and fitness experts, we should advocate for our streets for kids. Um, the pandemic has clearly shown, you know, how creating more space for children directly impacts their wellness, but also their, you know, ability to be physically active and to develop those skills. Um, you know, the difference between a child learning how to ride a bicycle in the street versus on a sidewalk is totally different. Um, also talking about how air pollution impacts children is a direct correlation of how they do, you know, the, with their physical health outcomes. One of my schools in Boston, one out of every four students had asthma. Um, and I think, you know, as physical, you know, experts, making the connection between traffic fatalities and children wellness, of course, but, you know, creating streets that are safe for children are going to be better for their development. Um, and these are two great resources that I use. One of them, uh, Designing Streets for Kids is a must. Uh, tons of case studies, with amazing photos. It's in multiple languages. And then uh, Urban Playground by Tim Gill is another amazing resource. And um, this is a photo from my bachelor party. It's a celebration before you get married. Uh, my bachelor party was in Washington, DC and I wanted to play games everywhere. So this is us playing Foursquare in front of the White House. 